with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And with their hands, they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you, if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, the church calls us to reflect on the theme of temptation, on how to deal with it. Two categories of people have been presented to us. The first come we are unfaithful and disobedient because they tended towards their human inclinations. The second one was obedient, Jesus Christ. The disobedient, Adam and Eve. But since God is a father of all of us, who created everything good, but because of the choices that our forefathers or our foreparents did, God said, even though you made the wrong choice, to be like me, to make your own designs, there is a particular identity that I have given you. You say, no, we don't like that identity. We want to change it. We want to act according to our own terms. But God said, no, I will not condemn you. I will give you opportunity to come back to me by sending his son. St. Paul talks about how through the sin of one man, all of us have been subjected to original sin. The sin we inherited from Adam and Eve. But through one man again, that is cancelled through righteousness, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. You see, the saying that you cannot give what you do not have has some merit in it. It has some values. The devil comes to our four fathers and he tells them, our first parents, he tells them that as soon as they eat this particular fruit of knowledge, they will be wiser than, than God. But at the end of it, having hearkened to what he had told them, they discovered that this was a lie. Indeed, the devil is the father of lies. Because all that he builds, the foundation 
is deceit and that will not last. The church in our wisdom has given us this period to reflect on our lives because we are always tempted to act according to our own inclinations, human inclinations, human desires, to set our own standards, our own designs, to be what you are not. If you look around the world today, you will see many people claiming to be what they are not. You are uniquely created in a particular way. And what is the identity that God has, you know, given us? To be his sons and daughters. Sons and daughters who are obedient to his words. But many people are swept by the deceit of the devil. Is it a bad thing to be tempted? No. What is bad is your reaction to the temptation, the disposition, the approach, the response that you have for the temptation is what makes it either to be good or bad. First parents responded in a manner that it was according to the flesh. Jesus Christ responded according to the will of God. It is true then what the cardinal Sarah says that without God human beings build hell on earth and indeed we are seeing it in different places we are seeing it in our homes we are seeing it in our communities we are seeing it wherever we go coming down to the temptations of Jesus in the gospel change the stones into bread If you are the son of God, if you are the daughter of God, why are you suffering? Is this your God a living one? That is what the devil will tell you. But I believe so much in the words of the prophet Isaiah that the designs of the Lord, the designs of God are rather different from ours. He sees more than we can see. And he means good for us. Sometimes what you are looking for, you do not get at the moment, you begin to be angry. And at that time, anything about faith does not make sense. But the church in our wisdom calls us to reflect on three things. To be able to help us to moderate that inclination and tendency, you know, to act in a different way. To mortify the flesh. How can we do that? Through prayers fasting and arms given to give out something that pinches you so that another person you know will be happy so that you will grow in the spirit and once the spirit is settled then it will carry the body very well we ask the Lord today because we are always tempted to act like our first parents but Jesus is always there through a little voice that comes to us. Please do not act this way. You are going to the ditch. But sometimes we ignore that voice, the voice of God, the sanctuary of God, conscience that is deep within our hearts. We are asking the Lord today to take the position of the psalmist who recognized how sinful he was, how imperfect he was. Have mercy on me, O God, for I have sinned. I think we can sing the same song. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. But we know that we are not alone in this journey of temptations. The hunger to do bad, the hunger to do injustice, but by the time we cling to God, it will be changed to hunger for justice, hunger for peace, for love, for solidarity, for unity, for rallying around, around each other. Sometimes people in position of, you know, of power tend to 
like control people. Sometimes people who do not even possess that power tend to claim what they do not have. The devil took Jesus to the parapet of the temple. Throw yourself down. The angels of God will take care of you. As if he's in charge of the world. But that, that is not true. A sense of control. The inclination to be famous, the inclination to be powerful, as projected in the devil. But Jesus Christ, in humility, in total submission to the will of his Father, was able to deal with the situation. And we can deal with our own temptations that come to us in different ways. To be angry with the acts of our children sometimes and never forgive. To ignore your partner sometimes or to say some things that will make the other person feel that his humanness does not have any value. But God calls us that as we reflect in these 40, di 40 days of the exercise of prayer and penance and conversion that will come into ourselves, that God will touch our hearts, that we will not act only with our heads, but we will act with the heart. It is in the heart that love springs. It is in the heart that peace springs. It is in the heart that sensitivity comes out. Despite the shortcoming of the other person, you are able to accommodate him. You are able to accommodate her. We ask the Lord today to open the eyes of our minds to reflect on these two categories of people. Some tended to their strengths and they made their own choice, our first parents. Another, to the total submission of his father, Jesus, and he won the devil. Since we are Christians, the children of God, who take after the life of Jesus, we can deal with the situations of our temptations to respond in a manner that will give praise to God. And as we do that, happiness will spring, joy will spring, and peace will reign. Amen. For the church, 
that she may be a light to all nations and help all people turn towards Christ as they journey through this Lenten season. We pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they work for lasting peace and mutual respect for human dignity and not be motivated by greed and self-interest. We pray to the Lord. For Selma Stazeski, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. that we may strive to love even our enemies, so as to guide others to pursue the truth and live it, and prepare disciples to love the true, the good, and the beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all corruption be uncovered, and those responsible for it lose their power and are replaced by leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. Lord For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, holy matrimony, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died, that they may come to know the fullness of God's joy in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord May this Lenten season strengthen us to overcome our temptations and resolve to draw closer to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord draw near to your people for this season of Lent, and our holy observances may give us the grace to overcome the snares of the ancient serpent through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.